Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at the possible interaction of two lines in three-dimensional space. So let's suppose we have lines L1 and L2 that are distinct, so they are not the same line. Then we have three possibilities. They can intersect at a single point, they can be parallel, or they can be skew. So and we're gonna look at an example of each of these. So let's look at this first example where we have R1 defining the line L1 and R2 defining the line L2. And notice here we have R1 has this vector equation. Notice I have a parameter of T, and then R2, I'm using a parameter of S. Now, that's really important because you don't want to use the same parameter here because that's imposing another condition on their intersection. That, that would impose the restriction on their intersection that they have to intersect at the same value of the parameter instead of just intersect at all. And we don't want that additional um, restriction. Okay, great. So an intersection would be like having the same point on each line, which means we want to solve the equation R1 of T equals R2 of S, and we want to solve that for S and T. But notice that's going to give us three equations and uh, two unknowns, so we have plenty of information. So, um, just using the definition of equality of vectors, that means the components have to be equal. So t plus 1 needs to be 3s, 2t minus 5 needs to be s minus 2, and finally 2t needs to be 3s plus 1. So that gives us our three equations. So let's write that down. We have t plus 1 equals 3s, we have 2t minus 5 equals s minus 2. And then finally, we have 2t equals 3s plus 1. So, um, I mean, there's a bunch of ways to go about solving this, but maybe what I'll do is label these equations and then use the substitution method. So I can easily solve this equation for t. That's going to give me t equals 3s minus 1. And then plug this into equation 3. So let's say we're plugging that into equation 3. That's going to give me 2 times t, but now t is 3s minus 1, equals 3s plus 1. So notice here I have 6s minus 2 equals 3s plus 1. I can move things around here, and I get 3s equals 3, which tells me that s equals 1. Furthermore, I can put that into my equation for t, and I will get t equals 2. Okay, good. But now that's actually not enough to show that these two intersect because we've only used equation one and equation three. In other words, their x coordinate and their z coordinate are the same here, but their y coordinate could be not the same. They could be on top of each other like this. So what I'd like to do here is plug that value of t and that value of s into the original vector equations of the lines just to check. So let's do R1 of that value of t, which is 2. So notice that is going to give us 3, comma, we have 4 minus 5, which is negative 1, and then uh, we have 4. Great. But now uh, we'll go over here, R2 of 1, because we're plugging S equals 1 into that. And let's see what we get for that. So we're going to have 3 again right here. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then uh, 3 times 1 plus 1 is 4. So these are equal. So they intersect. at the point three, one, four. Okay, great. So I'll clean up the board and then we're gonna look at another example.
Okay, so let's look at another example. So let's say we have r1 of t is given by that vector equation. Notice I've written it a little bit different just to get used to seeing different notations. r2 of s equals that vector equation. So now we could go about doing the same thing as we did in the last example, which is setting up some equations and trying to solve them. But before we do that, we should look at the vector defining each of these lines. And notice that the vector defining the first line is a multiple of the vector dividing the second, defining the second line. In fact, if we set v1 to be the vector dividing the first line to be 4, 1, minus 2, then that means v2 equals, uh, notice we can factor a negative 2 out of this, 4, uh, 1, minus 2, which equals negative 2, v1. So the vector defining the second line is parallel to the vector defining the first line. So let's sketch up what's going on here. So let's say this is v1. So notice v2 is minus 2 times v1. In other words, the scalar multiple with the scalar multiple of negative 2. So that's going in the opposite direction, 2 units. So this is, so if this guy is v1, then this guy is v2, which is negative 2 v1. So the vectors are parallel, which makes the lines parallel. Obviously, there's one more thing to check that we won't check, and that is that they're not intersecting, but I'll leave it to you to do that, and you can use inspiration from the example that's coming up in order to do that kind of calculation. Okay, I'll clean up the board and we'll look at one more example. Okay, so now we're ready for our last example. So I've written the equation of two lines, and notice I've used another notation for it, again, just to get used to that. Notice I've used the notation that uses the standard basis vectors i, j, and k. But that's the same thing as the component vectors, it's just a slightly different way of writing it. Okay, so we're going to approach this the same way. We're going to notice that the vector defining this first line is given by 4, 1, 0. And we can see that because the coefficient of the variable here is 4, 1, and then 0 over there. And then furthermore, the vector defining the second line is negative 1, 2, 1. So negative 1, 2, 1. And so we can immediately see that these guys are not parallel. So I'll write that down, not parallel. So that means they have a chance of intersecting. So we'll do the same thing that we did with the first example, which is set all of the components equal to each other. We'll have a system of three equations and two unknowns. Great. <clears throat> so I guess that should be yellow. Good. So notice our equations are given by 1 plus 4t equals 2 minus s. And then t equals 3 plus 2s. And then finally, s equals 3. That's what we get for the k component. And let's just jot that down. This is what we're getting from the i, j, and k component. Great. But now what we can do here is take this value of s and plug it into each of these equations, and that's going to give us two equations that we can solve for t. So notice this first one is going to turn into 1 plus 4t equals 2 minus s, but s equals 3, so that's negative 1. And then uh, this second one which I'll move down here, is going to be t equals 3 plus 2s, but that's going to be 3 plus 6, which is 9. So there we've got t equals 9 already here. And now notice if we subtract 1 from this, we get 4t equals negative 2, which makes t equal negative half. But notice these are inconsistent with each other. So that tells us that these lines don't intersect. <clears throat> and so they're not parallel and they don't intersect and so that means they must be skew. Okay, that's the end of this example. I'm going to erase the board and then we're going to look at a sketch up of these three possibilities.
Okay, so here's a brief sketch up of these three possibilities. So here we have line L1 and L2. Notice they're intersecting in a single point. So you can think these two lines define a plane and this plane is like R2 and they're obviously gonna intersect in a single point there. Now here we have L1 and L2 and they're parallel but non-intersecting. And then finally, it's hard to draw on a board, but here that we have two skew lines. So we have L1 here and L2 here, and notice L1 is going underneath L2, but they're most definitely not parallel. Now maybe the best way to do this is if you have access to a big room with chalkboards opposite each other, you can draw one vertical line on a chalkboard on one side of the room and a horizontal line on a chalkboard on the other side of the room, and those are gonna be a really good example of two skew lines. Okay, so now that we've done examples of each of these and we've looked at the graphical representations, I think we're at a good stopping point for this video.